Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome, welcome to a party. In spite of the weather, we want to welcome you. It's not really a party, it's more a celebration, a dedication, a, a festival, an event, also a monumental achievement all rolled into one. And it's also a party. <laughs> I'm Danny Kay, and I'm speaking to you live and wet from Epcot Center. This is the realization of Walt Disney's dream to create a permanent showcase of technology and world culture. It's a living monument to past achievements and a testament to the hopes of the future. A future where the quality of life for all people will be improved. It's with this spirit in mind that I'd like you all to share with me the wonder and the excitement of this truly remarkable place. Why don't you come with me as we look forward to the dawning of the 21st century. Twenty-first century's here It's time for the dream to come true This glorious figment of one man's imagination It started a long time ago Continued to flower and grow From the marvelous mind of that magical man Now the theme of the dream and the fabulous plan Are born and just bust in to get underway And the 21st century begins today The 21st century's now There's history happening here Before you, you see how the dream reached its culmination most thrilling sight one could see With visions of things yet to be A brilliant design of incredible scope Constructed of miracles, magic and hope And a new kind of joy for this weary old sphere And the 21st century begins right here That you can touch and feel The world of Epcot's all around you But it's no fantasy No fantasy It's all alive and real Epcot, the magnificent dream realized but, but maybe you're asking yourselves, well, what's an Epcot? Well, that's a good question. Is it just another amusement park? No. Number one, Epcot is the experimental prototype community of tomorrow. And number two, Epcot isn't just an anything. Oh, no. It isn't just a resort. It isn't just a world's fair. Not just a cavalcade of wizardry, technology, and flair. Not just Epicurean displays by international gourmets where one can dine, lunch, munch, crunch for days and days and days. Not just a festival of music, dance, the arts, or education, nor a pageant for the senses sparked by wild imagination. Not just communication, nor the bounty of the land. Not just the world of motion, nor the ocean or the sand. It's not just transportation, nor light or sight or sound. Not just satellites in space, nor the fossils underground. Where Epcot is concerned, there ain't no just about it. Epcot isn't just in anything, it's everything and more. A great deal more than anything the world has seen before. The perfect planned community, the splendorific sprawl. And Epcot Center is the heart of it all. Just so there's no confusion, Epcot Center is located in the center of Epcot. And Epcot Center is made up of two parts, which is Future World and the World Showcase. It's 2.5 miles from the Magic Kingdom 
which is also part of Epcot, which is what the entire 27,000 acre area known as the experimental prototype community of tomorrow or Epcot or Walt Disney World is called. <laughs> Just so there's no confusion. I hear a thousand voices loud and strong. Celebration with your host Danny Kay and guest Drew Barrymore, Roy Clark, Alex Haley, Marie Osmond, Eric Severi, Alan Shepard, Dreamfinder and Figment, Zico and Smart One, the West Point Glee Club, and the All American College Marching Band. I am here on a little bit of space in front of the entrance to Future World. Now that beautiful round object behind me, right there, is an engineering marvel called Spaceship Earth. And that is the symbol of Epcot Center. Now inside that eight-story geosphere is Walt Disney's tribute to the progress of mankind. From the earliest crude attempts at communicating to the latest projection of life in outer space. One man who knows a great deal about that is Alan Shepard. He was the first American in space and one of the original astronauts. Alan? Hi, Danny. How are you? I'm uh, delighted I'm to fine. see you again. Good to see you, sir. How do you feel? I'm just fine. Well, it's good. Fine. Back here on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, without, uh, without divulging any classified information, where do you suppose we're headed, uh, I mean, in, in the terms of the future of mankind. Well, I think if you look backward for a moment and trace the progress of civilization, yeah. you'll see that basically there are only two directions we can go. Oh, yeah, up and down, huh? <laughs> That's right. Either way up in space or down yeah. into the depths of the sea. And, of course, over the years, we've been doing research and experimentation in, in both areas, and I don't think that one necessarily precludes the other. But you might imagine that I hold the view that space is a... Uh, it's pretty exciting. It has a great possibility of enhancing our lives in the future. You know, so much of the technology that's being used in the space program has immediate application right here on the Earth. It's yeah. just with us today. I hope you have a fine time around here. There's a lot of marvelous things to see. Maybe well, we'll, we'll see you soon, Danny. Okay, So long. Take care. Hi. 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 Do you know who that was? Alan Shepard, one of the first astronauts and a national hero. That's very good. Now, do you know who I am? Danny Kay, one of the first comedians and a national treasure. I think I'll have to buy her a present for that. Now, this is Drew Barrymore, one of the first actresses to meet E.T. personally and a national delight. Now, I hope you've got comfortable shoes on because I'm going to take you on a real long journey. Where are we going? Well, we're going out into the past and the future, past those walls into the land of energy and motion and communication covering thousands of years of progress. Maybe I should bring a snack. 
I think if you just bring your curiosity, that'll be enough. This is the gateway to future world. It's the world of tomorrow, today. And that world awaits through those magic gates. What's so special about the future? Well, you see, the future contains all the hopes and the dreams of the past and the present. It's really quite wonderful. Well, how do you know? You've never been to the future. Well, of course I have. Don't you remember yesterday I was saying to you that tomorrow we might go to future world? Yes. Huh? Yes. What? Yes. Yes, of course. Well, today is the tomorrow I was talking about yesterday. And tomorrow, yesterday will be today. And I got to the future from the past when the past became the present, which is now. <laughs> you get it? Got it. Good. Did you explain it to me? <laughs> but all the future starts with the past. And they're both contained inside those walls right there. There'll come a day, not far away, when living out in outer space is no big deal. That day began, the day that man first put his mind to work and came up with a wheel. Sometimes it takes a few mistakes before a great idea takes wing and starts to fly. But the progression and foundation of our means of transportation all resulted from a man who said, let's try. Do you really think I'll ever live in outer space? Oh, I don't know. I, you probably will. A as a matter of fact, in the future, you might be going to Mars High School. Do they give homework? <laughs> probably. You call that progress? Well, progress is in the eye of the beholder. Take energy, for instance. That's a good one. Beneath the ground, there once was found a large supply of high-grade oil and natural gas. While on the shore, a dinosaur would stand and watch the prehistoric era pass. Men worked today to find a way to stretch the fuel supply, which now has gotten tight. But when the fuel supply is done for, we may all turn to the sun for all the energy and power, heat and light. Who ever thought of that? Oh, what do you mean, about using the sun? Yes. Well, that idea has been around for centuries. But it took some very sharp people to make it work. But every generation builds on the information that has gone before them. In days gone by, great men would try to put their knowledge down for other men to see. The world took note of what they wrote and passed it on in many ways to you and me. The printing press helped us progress. The telegraph and telephone and TV too. And every step along the way there was a person who would say there must be still a million more great things to do. And there were, and there are, and there always will be. And it's all out there just waiting for little old you. Sounds exciting. Well, the future is always exciting. And it belongs to the children. But there's one thing I always want you to remember. Even when you're grown up, you must never stop being a kid. Will you remember that? You will. <laughs> if you can see the world for what it is, and keep that sense of wonder in your heart. Well, then I do believe someday you may achieve that perfect state where you'll know all there is to know. And you may grow up to be a kid. If you can keep alive, that spark of joy and take delight in everything you see then I would have to say there is a chance you may be at that place someday where all good dreamers go and you may grow up to be a kid that pretty if you will always choose the simple truth 
Then you will never lose the bloom of youth. You're adorable. If you can walk the road that lies ahead without a doubt or fear where it may lead, your life will be secure, your dreams will all endure. And you will always feel that extra special glow. And you will grow up to be like you? A kid just like me. <laughs> hey kid, want to meet somebody from the future? Well, I, I would like to, but that's kind of impossible. Are you telling a personal friend of E.T.'s that's impossible? Wow. Come with me. Okay. I did Liddy, an actor's life for me. Hello, humans. Greetings. I did Liddy. Seiko, I'd like you to meet a friend of mine. Say hello to Mr. Danny K. Master K, this is indeed an honor. Oh. Uh, uh y yes. Well, we know that the the, the, the the honor is all mine. Uh, uh, may, may I ask you a question? Proceed. Uh, uh, do, do you uh, do you live around here? I mean, I mean, in, in... negative, Master K. Oh. I'm just a visitor like yourself. Oh, I but see. I do have relatives living in Communicore and an Imagination Pavilion and in some very high places. Well, that sounds like a very good neighborhood. That is correct. You might say I'm a computer chip of the old block. <laughs> well, uh, where do you come from originally? I come from somebody's imagination, where all wonderful and incredibly fantastic things come from. He hasn't been programmed for modesty. I think you're absolutely right. Somebody was telling me that uh, about a character named Dreamfinder who lives in the uh, imagination pavilion. <laughs> Is correct, Mr. Yeah. King. And he is the latest creation, I hear, and a real expert on the subject of creativity. Uh -huh. You suppose I could meet him? Your wish is my command, Master K. Dreamfinder, this is Master K and Drew. Drew and Master K. Meet the keeper of the sparks of imagination, Dreamfinder. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. <laughs> and this is my assistant and good right arm, Figment. <laughs> I, I, I understand you're in charge of some uh, very creative things. I, I, I would think that would be terribly interesting. Right you are, but right in there, imaginations everywhere. The visions once inside your head exist inside that place instead. Imagination is my game, the sparks of which ignite the flame of your own creativity. And that's real great for you and me. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. Want to go inside? I, I sure do. <laughs> then follow her. When it comes to imagination, a child shall lead them. Come on, kid, and don't get lost or lag behind. And try not to leave your gum wrappers all over the place. Yes, ma'am, I promise. Come on. When Walt Disney first began to think about Epcot, one of the main objectives was to gather the latest thoughts and the greatest thinkers all in one place because they could share their expertise about the future of man on this planet. Now, although man does not live by bread alone, <laughs> it's also very true that he doesn't live very long without it. So a great deal of work went into finding new and better ways to feed the entire population of the world. Roy Clark has a few words to say on that subject. You know, when it comes to food, I'm very particular. I mean, I make it a rule never to eat anything that's still moving. But that doesn't mean I can't appreciate food that does move. Like they've got here at the animated show called Kitchen Cabaret. It's sort of a cross between a Las Vegas review and a produce producer's production of a night of a hundred vegetables. Now, you may be laughing, but you're also learning. 
And that, to me, is probably the most important thing about this entire place. That and the food, of course. I mean, they got things here in the land pavilion growing in the darndest ways, in water, in sand, in the air, crops run on top of each other, you name it, they've got it. And they take you through a rainforest, a desert, and the American plains. And you really get the feeling of what a complicated old lady that Mother Nature really is. They got a film called Symbiosis, which shows you how dissimilar organisms can live together for mutual advantage and harmony. You must have gotten the idea from watching the guys in my band. But believe me, once you've been through this place, you'll have a whole new appreciation of what it takes to feed your face and the faces of billions of others on the face of the earth. This land is your land. This land is my land. From California to the New York Island, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters. This land was made for you and me As I was walking That ribbon of highway I saw above me That endless skyway I saw below me That golden valley This land was made for you and me This land is your land This land is my land from California to the New York Island, from the Redwood Forest to the Cross Street Waters, this land was made for you and me. I roamed and rambled, I followed my footsteps to the sparkling sands of her diamond deserts, and all around me, a voice was sounding. This land was made for you and me This land is your land This land is my land From California To the New York Island From the Redwood Forest To the Gulf Stream waters This land was made for you and me When the sun comes shining I was strolling And the wheat fields waving and the dust clouds rolling As the fog was lifted A voice was chanting This land was made for you and me This land is your land This land is my land From California To the New York Island From the Redwood Forest To the Gulf Street Waters This land was made for you and me this land was made for you and me This is some kind of place, isn't it, Roy? Wow, Danny. You know, raised in the country on the farm, I thought yeah. I'd do a little bit of something about growing things, yeah. but this beats all. You know, they even raise fish in here? Fish? I wouldn't lie to you. That's no fish story. I tell you, nothing surprises me in this place, and that's what makes it so surprising. Oh, Carl Hodges. Roy, this is Dr. Carl Hodges. Hi, Roy. He's the nice director of the Environmental Research Laboratory at the University of Arizona. He is also the principal consultant to the Land Pavilion right here, and one of the most respected scientists in his field, the deep bow. Yes, he already has my respect. What's new, Doc? Well, the most exciting thing that's new are the possibilities that exist today for eliminating starvation and malnutrition on this planet. Uh, did you know that of the thousands of plants that are possible food sources, that we use only eight to produce about 90% of our food, and really most of that comes from only three, wheat, rice, and corn. One of the things we're doing here is broadening the base by looking at new plants. And, you know, the technology exists. Really all we need is the, the courage and the innovation and the ability and the will to do it same as our business <laughs> you know i don't mean to sound frivolous but doc is there any way that you could maybe grow an olive with a martini in it oh come on, on. Just kidding. <laughs> it's not terribly high on our priority i'm sorry uh, carl thank you very much it was nice talking to nice you talking nice to you. dishing the dirt with you i must say C come we'll back. see you again come back sir. anytime Great, okay. thank you bye-bye wow. you know one of the fascinating things about epcot no matter where you turn interesting things are happening. As a matter of fact, 
Even the robots are talking to each other. Come on. Yeah, it's true. What, what do robots have to say to each other? Same as anyone else, I guess. Hi, cutie. What's your name? Smart one. What's yours? They call me Zico. Do you live around here? Sure do. Work here, too. Right in the Communicore. Communicore? What is it that you do? Well, we sort of run the highly complex communication, information, and technological systems for the entire Epcot Center. This place is completely controlled and operated from a central computer bank. And that includes lights, shows, and all the audio animatronic characters. Wow. Isn't that kind of a big job for such a little robot? I take a very short lunch hour. <clears throat> I must say, this Epcot of yours seems like a very advanced scientific system. Can you show me how all of this works? Got a minute and 38 seconds? Yep. Pack the nuts and bolts over there, Sika, and pay attention. Okay. bit like Columbus felt when he started on his journey into the new world because on the other side of this man-made lagoon is a brand new man-made world and in that world there are nine countries that are thousands of miles apart geographically and they're joined together in a one mile area to display their culture their art and their historical achievements Standing side by side over there, the United Kingdom, Canada, France, Japan, America, Italy, Germany, People's Republic of China and Mexico. And the best part of this is that you don't even have to go through customs to enjoy it. Reflected in the waters of this man-made inland sea, there's a vision of the future of our world as it might be. The fragments of a miracle are falling into place In this showcase for the entire human race People to people, culture to culture Nation to nation coming forth and joining hands This is World Showcase, the substance, the essence The coming together of youth from distant lands Growing and learning from each other Sensing the needs of one another A fellowship of youngsters with a special dream to share 
their different customs blending in a mixture rich and rare. The need was never greater for all people everywhere, so the Imagineers devised this wondrous plan, the world showcase of the family of man. Come see our fellowship showcase of the world. You feel a spirit like no place in the world. You may come face to face with the whole human race in this constantly expanding land of peace and understanding, where history and heritage, customs and tradition are presented in a permanent international exhibition. The showcase, a brotherhood of nations, world showcase, filled with hopes and aspirations. This showcase. Of humanity relations inspire us all to get the various flags unfurled. Let's celebrate the showcase of the world. We'll cross the Crystal Lagoon to Shanghai and Kowloon. Then we'll travel to Mexico and Venice, Italy. We may meet Jojo San on the shores of Japan. La Belle France, oh may we, you'll be the toast of Paris. We'll take a Teutonic spin to Heidelberg and Berlin. Then to the fair, United Kingdom will away. Then we'll see Canada from Calgary to mighty Hudson Bay. So get dressed in your sombrero, lay your hose in and beret. Grab your ovi and your gondola, and oh yes, by the way, bring a Chinese gong and bring along a coffee cup and say, you'll be grand in every land along the way. Then we'll meet you in the good old USA. Come see a Christmas ship show, case of Shanghai. handsome and rather intelligent young people are part of a group who make up a, a kind of an interesting program called World Showcase Fellowship. Isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're from the various countries represented in the World Showcase and they work here and study here and they're sort of unofficial ambassadors for their native countries. Now, I, uh, I met a lot of them when they first arrived in Orlando and uh, Luckily, they, they had seen some of my pictures, so they kind of knew who I was. Welcome to Orlando. On behalf of Captain Beach and the crew of Flight 647, we'd like to thank you for flying Eastern, the official airline of Walt Disney World. There'll be some new fellowship students arriving in the years to come as new World Showcase pavilions from other countries, such as Israel, Morocco, Spain, join this entire family. Hi, how do you do? How do you... Oh, uh, uh, I, I, uh, uh, thank you. I, uh, oh, I, I, uh,
I guess they didn't see my pictures. Stay tuned. Walt Disney Presents will be right back. Disney Presents right here on Disney. Alex Haley, I presume? You presume correctly. Welcome to Equatorial Africa. Well, thank you very much. Uh, am I too early? About a year, but it's always oh. nice to see you. <laughs> I know you've been a consultant to uh, World Showcase since the beginning. So you must have a pretty good notion of what we will all expect to see when the African Pavilion opens. Well, for one thing, we plan to show the re beauty, the drama, the energy, the diversity of this amazing continent. Well, who should know better about that than the author of Roots, huh? If I remember correctly, Alex, Walt Disney was the one who said, I would rather entertain people and hope that they learn something from it. And I think you agree with that. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, that's the theory behind all these other pavilions that are soon to open. Mm -hmm. Sir, it was an honor, and I am very, very proud to have talked with you. And I will be seeing you soon. I think I can find my way out myself. You think you won't need a guide? Uh, not this time. Maybe next time. We'll see you in about a year. Behind me is the American Adventure Pavilion. It represents, in my opinion, the finest achievement of Disney creativity and imagineering. Using film and audio animatronic figures, the American Adventure praises the accomplishments of our nation without glossing over its shortcomings or dreams yet to be fulfilled. Now, we may have difficulty in reaching our goals, but the fulfillment of dreams seems to come very naturally to a certain young lady named uh, Marie Osmond. And watching her grow from childhood to maturity has been a national pastime for many years. Here are the results. Come and sing a simple song of freedom Sing from every mountain top and shore Let it fill the air Tell the people
It's been wonderful sharing this world tour with the dancers from the Amman Folk Ensemble. Every move they make is a picture. Another phrase that comes to mind walking around Epcot is one picture is worth a thousand words. And if that's true, then the one and a half million feet of film that was shot for all the pavilions in 30 different nations must be worth, oh, a couple libraries. I was especially impressed by the film in the China Pavilion. The story behind the scenes is almost as remarkable as the film itself. From high over the Great Wall to the grasslands of Inner Mongolia, the Disney film team worked side by side with Chinese production crews to capture the mystery and the beauty of the many faces of ageless China. The quiet beauty and serenity of the Li River was certainly an enormous contrast to the physical hardships endured in the frozen Mongolian wilderness and the sweltering Gobi Desert. Disney Circle Vision crews traveled on to regions never before filmed by Western cameras, including the busy streets of Beijing and the Forbidden City. The culture and history of these most gracious people came to life throughout an incredible journey across China. After four months on location half a world away, we headed for home with priceless treasures to share with the rest of the world. Walt Disney, the man whose enthusiasm and vision was the driving spirit behind this incredible undertaking, has been gone for almost 16 years. At the time of his passing, a most eloquent tribute to Walt was delivered by this gentleman, Eric Severide. Annie, a few lines from that old piece, if I may. Oh, please do. Disney was an original, I thought, not just an American original, but an original period. Mm -hmm. He was a happy accident, one of the happiest that this century had ever experienced. And judging by the way it's been behaving, in spite of all Disney tried to tell it about laughter and love and children and puppies and sunrises, the century hardly deserved it. He probably did more to soothe troubled human spirits than all the psychiatrists in the world. <laughs> and to a child, this weary world is brand new and gift-wrapped. Disney tried to keep it that way for adults. You see, we all spend our lives trying to recapture the vision, trying to see the world afresh. Most of us lose that touch. Disney never did. I wish I'd known him. Oh, well, I was very lucky, Eric. I did know him. And I think he would have been enormously pleased about what you just said. Thank you. Now, Eric, on a, on a personal note, I've, I've been watching you all afternoon. You've been wandering around here scribbling like crazy. Now. But, but would you tell me a little of what you've been writing? I, I began life as a scribbler, uh, Danny. <laughs> uh, just a few impressions of the center. Uh, it's obviously far from just entertainment. I think the whole thing is designed as information, instruction, and inspiration. Now, this man dealt in the gossamer of dreams and fantasies. But look how he's created this tangible and permanent monument to real life and humanity. I think he knew that in our time, fantasy and reality are merging together. Mm. And obviously, he was a perfectionist. The passion for truthful detail is all through this center. And he was always upbeat. You know, somebody said there are three kinds of people in this world. The well poisoners, the lawn mowers, and the life enhancers. <laughs> Disney was like you. He was a life enhancer. Oh, thank you. And this place itself is a celebration, not only of technology and creativity, but of the American dream as well.
boy. I must tell you, I've had a wonderful time here at Epcot. And I hope, I hope some of you share that feeling as well. On behalf of Epcot and all the people who took part in this show tonight, on behalf of all of them, I would like to thank them. I would like to thank you. And I'd like to send you the very best of wishes. Good luck and good night. I hope to see you soon.